What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the Onyx Report, Black Masculinist News for the Day. I am your host, and um, this one I decided to do. Let's see if I sharpen this up. Okay, this one I decided to do because, uh, and I've said this before, a number of years ago, I had a black feminist come to my campus and give a presentation. One thing she pointed out was that in her assessment, uh, black women were the only group to suffer from um, hair discrimination. Come on, what's going on? Stuff here. Sorry, having some technical difficulties here. There we go. Come on. All right. Eh, not working well. There we go. That's about where I want it. Anyway, so she said in this lecture to all black female students that it was only black women that suffered from hair discrimination. And I shared this with Dr. Tommy Curry and, um, you know, we kind of laughed about it. He made some very significant points uh, about that, right? But I wanted to start with a, an actual current situation, something we've seen in the news. And this has been going on for the longest. It ain't new, really. But this is just the latest latest occurrence of it. Right. So this is looking at the experience experiences of two young men. Right? This comes out of an article on AtlantaBlackStar.com entitled DOJ Defends Teens from Unlawful Discrimination after Texas school district demands they cut their locks, right? Okay, so uh, this is a piece that came out um, July 30th, and it reads, two Texas teens who were targeted by a school district for refusing to cut their locks have gained the support of the U.S. Department of Justice in their ongoing legal battle. At the start of of the 29, um, excuse me, of the 2019-2020 school year, DeAndre Arnold and Caden Bradford were both students in the Barbers Hill Independent School District uh, when they were told the length of their hair did not adhere to the district's hair policy. As a result, the teens were told to cut their hair in order to continue attending classes at Barbers Hill High School. Both, backed by the support of their mothers, refused to do so and were punished with in-school suspensions. Let me actually uh, see. I want you guys to actually see this. Mm-mm-mm. I got so many, too many buttons in some respects. I forget. Oh, that's right. Here, let me do it this way. There we go. That's one of the young men right there. Right. So uh, let me continue here. That's DeAndre. The district's hair length policy states. Male students' hair will not extend at any time below the eyebrows or below the earlobes. Male students' hair must not extend below the top of a t-shirt, collar, or be gathered or worn in a style that would be allowed that would allow the hair to extend below the top of the t-shirt of a t-shirt collar, dang it, uh, below the eyebrows or below the earlobes when let down. Caden's mother, Cindy, says her son um, has worn his hair in locks since sixth grade. I just wanted you to get a chance to uh, kind of see the young man there, right? Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, man. Too many things going on, y'all. All right. Thought I had something on the screen. I don't think I had. My bad. Um, it's not that serious. But anyway, just wanted you to see DeAndre. So, young man, right? Handsome young cat. Trying to do his thing. Anyway. Um, okay. So, so Caden's mother, Cindy, says her son has worn his hair like this since the sixth grade. She said the prior years, his hair length became a concern at school, but he was told that if he could keep his hair pulled back, he would not be in violation of the policy. DeAndre, who is Caden's cousin, similarly wore his hair styled upwards, uh, but it didn't make him exempt from the district's efforts to control how he wore his hair. 
They say DeAndre's hair can't touch the collar, ears, or in the face. It never really did. He's always had it up. His mother, Sandy, told local Houston station, a local Houston station. Um, but by December 2019, the policy had been updated, restricting hair length when it was not styled upwards. While DeAndre was able to complete his coursework, he was told he would not be allowed to participate in the May graduation ceremony due to his unwillingness to cut his hair. The cousins transferred to a nearby district to finish the school year. Right? This is interesting because there was recently in the last couple of years was a young man who I believe was valedictorian of his high school class. and He was not allowed to walk or give the final uh, speech of the year because he had a goatee. All of that will come into focus in a moment. Both mothers sued the district, alleging that the district's hair length restrictions, which apply solely to male students, interesting, constitute sex discrimination under the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause, Title IX, and the Educational Amendments of 1972. All right. Um, the district responded by filing a motion to have the case dismissed on the premise that the mother's claims of sex and race discrimination were unfounded. The DOJ disagrees. In a statement of interest filed July 23rd, the DOJ states had DeAndre and KB been female, their hair would not have run afoul of the district's hair link policy, but because they are male, the district disciplined them for noncompliance. They further added that the school district is misguided in assuming that neither Sandy or Cindy has the standing to assert a Title IX retaliation claim. DOJ hopes the district's efforts to have the case dismissed and um, denied. Excuse me. The DOJ hopes the district's effort to have the case dismissed denied. If it is, this would mark the second small victory in DeAndre and Caden's battle. Last summer, a Texas federal judge blocked Barbers Hill High School from enforcing the controversial hair policy, leading Caden, who is now a senior, to transfer back to Barbers Hill. In August of last year, Janae Nelson, NAACP Legal Defense Fund Associate Director Counsel, shares a similar statement. Bradford does not have to endure an unjust and educationally damaging in-school suspension simply for having uncut locks, which are an immutable part of his black identity and cultural heritage. End of article. Yeah. Um, the reason I read that is because there's an article in response to this feminist that came to Fresno State to give a lecture that, um, you know, where there was a number of things she spouted in that lecture that were highly problematic. But the reason I single that out is because she's not alone. And making the kind of base assumptions that she made, I wanted to refute them with some, some information that I think uh, might be of use. So this particular piece um, is uh, one I wrote on my blog, newblackmasculinities.wordpress.com. I will try to remember to link it in the description box, but uh, this might be one you need to check out. I wrote this uh, in 2017 entitled Race Discriminatory Grooming and Intersectionality in Employment Practices, A Brief Observation. And basically what I was talking about in this piece is the way in which black males have endured discrimination, hair discrimination in particular, for years. I pointed out uh, black men's unemployment rates uh, in relation to black women's, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and I argued that uh, grooming can be an issue. And I've cited a 1993 New York Times article that talked about black men who um, suffer a particular skin ailment. Now, there are some black women that suffer from it, but it's overwhelmingly, over, overwhelmingly a black male uh, issue. Pseudo uh, folliculitis barbi. Pseudo folliculitis barbi. Right? And you can see that in the picture here. Many of you have seen this. If you don't suffer from it yourself, you've definitely seen it in plenty of other men, right? Where the ingrown hair grows back in and it can be difficult to address. But PFB, which is also what it's referred to as, is caused when tightly curled beard hairs sharpened by shaving curved back, re-enter the skin, producing inflammation, bumps, and infections. Although in estimates vary, medical authorities say that the ailment afflicts perhaps half of the black men who shave and that about half of all those afflicted have conditions serious enough that they should not shave at all. So when you start talking about people who say, you know, wanted to serve as firefighters or police officers or in the military, any, any particular job that require in corporate America that required that you be close shaven, this could off, you know, could pose difficulty for many black men. Right. Um, so that being said, that was one of the kind of issues there. And the case of the black male high school valedictorian was in 2016. 
um, uh, that so it's you know this is still happening. And that was just him having facial hair, let alone locks. And we know there have been other cases that uh, relate to that. And there are lawsuits that have gone all the way back to the 1970s in regard to this. So why am I posing this? Well, the reason I'm posting this and, and, and kind of providing this information here is because it's yet again an aspect of the black male experience that tends to go under the surface, tends to go just you know unregarded. Uh, people tend to believe that black males you know, have it easy, interestingly enough. And I like to, you know, arm brothers with this information so that you can better represent other black men. Now, this isn't an issue of whether or not, uh, you know, these boys should have short hair. Clearly, I'm a little biased on the matter, but I'm not so much talking about this, their particular situation at their high school. If they got the DOJ on their side. I think they'll be fine. My issue is the degree to which there are so many facets of the black male experience that are disregarded, that are that are you know swept under the rug, that I think it important that we keep it in people's face and that we ourselves as black males are aware of it, whether we suffer from it directly or not. And the reason I think it's that much more important to do is because it further highlights how invisible black male struggles can tend to be. And you really haven't seen this in the mainstream. Hasn't gone viral, not a major issue, but maybe it should be. Especially if you have conditions that can't be helped. So anyway, just wanted to drop that to you. Hope you guys are well. Y'all have a good one. Look forward to hearing you in the comment section. Peace. Yes.